is my mid 90s Gale 5625 SX and kind of had a pretty big uh, failure the other day when I was moving some dirt and trying to take a stump out. The arm should not look like that. So I've kind of been waiting for this to happen. When I bought this machine and I rescued it, I knew that it had been welded all the way along this section really really poorly all the way through there pretty massive crack on that side and the same had been done all the way around there and so it finally gave up the ghost and broke off so today's project is to fix that the biggest thing that i want in doing this is i want to make sure that when i put the bucket down the entire front bucket edge touches the ground at the same time and what that's going to mean is i'm probably going to have to take both of these hydraulic cylinders off because that'll get me access to around there take some of these hydraulic lines and then I'm going to have to grind out all the weld, all the weld. Got a flat tire. All right, so on this Gale skid steer, the key, ever since I got it, will accept pretty much any key. You put any key in there, just touch the plastic piece. So you could start this with a screwdriver or a utility knife, but now it won't even turn. I know I can jump the motor because I used this on the actual starter itself and it starts. So. That brings me to the key switch being bad. So I got a replacement one. Not sure if it's gonna fit perfectly or not, but we're gonna give it a shot. Oh boy. All right, check that out. Got a mouse nest up there. There's a wasp nest right there. You know, there's nothing really around our switch. So that's the ignition switch. So let's just clean this out a little bit. Pull this key switch out, took the nut off. This little wire here has some mouse chewing on it. So looks like there's a B on this one, and that's probably for battery. Although this is a heavy cable. Let's go to the starter. So what does this have? Relay, battery, control, and start. One, two, three, four. We got here. One, two, three, four. All right, this keyhole for the ignition doesn't fit the new one.
almost. Perfect. Couldn't get any better than that. All right, I was doing a little more checking with the multimeter and I'm figuring out that buried at the bottom down here, this fuse, which is a 30 amp fuse, it is not allowing power. All right, so basically this wire right here comes from the battery and goes to one of the terminals on this fuse here. And then this one runs over here and jumps over to the battery terminal on the start switch. And I was not getting full voltage out of it. So having sat outside for well before I had it, just corrosion is built up. You see all that green. So I'm gonna clean this up and it should work fine. And if it doesn't, these are cheap enough, we'll replace it. But for now, let's get it cleaned up, see if it works. I, if it does work, I'm gonna cut off each of these ends on these three and put new crimp terminals on because they all have corrosion on them but and these two are actually kind of cracked up and broken a bit but for now i want to see if it works and if it does then we'll we'll get those ends replaced but we've got the key switch in and hopefully this will fix it well i thought i had this fuse thing rebuilt i epoxied it back together and i cleaned it and now it's snapped off again, so that's fine. Whatever, I'll get a new one of those. That wasn't even what I was gonna tell you about. So I figured out that I got power up to here, and then I was able to get it through that fuse, now no longer, back up to the new switch, which is installed, but I was not getting anything down to the solenoid on the starter. And so I took a big jumper wire and I was able to jump from the positive to the signal wire on the starter solenoid and get it to start. So I know that there was a problem between right here where this green wire goes from here, goes down out of there into a connector and then that connector runs through a harness back to the starter. So I ran this wire which is a signal wire going directly from here and it the other end of it goes to the solenoid on the starter. And now I'm able to start it with the new key, which is great. Obviously now I'm not totally able to because this mechanism just broke on me, but I'll fix that and then I'll show you that this does work. All right, I don't have another fuse, basically holder and whatever. So I found this little double connector. It's actually a triple. So I've just got the fuse bypass. So we're just going from positive right to the positive on the start switch. So I'll get one of those. I'll find one of those soon. Uh, I'm probably going to try and run to the part store today, but I could show you if I turn the key. Beautiful. And while I was at it, I went ahead and I replaced the light bulb in both gauges, the fuel gauge and the temp gauge. And so now those will be visible in the, in the dark. All right, so the plan is gonna be to run a new, probably thicker gauge wire for the start solenoid signal. So yeah, I wanted something thicker you know, closer to what the factory gauge is. And so, yeah, I'm gonna get a thicker wire here and we'll get that run in there. And then honestly, it'll be fine. I'm just gonna basically try and tuck it right in the same wiring harness, at least to out of the cab. And once it's behind the cab, we'll run it out and get it all the way over to the start solenoid. All right, I wasn't able to find anything at a store, but I went to the salvage workshop where I've got all kinds of goodies and I, couldn't find exactly the same one, but I did find another 30 amp fuse. And so this one, we'll put it in here like this and we'll just self tap screw it right through that. And that will be how it works. And you can still get to the fusible link. 
I'll throw this one away. I'll probably pull the fuse out of this so I can keep it, but, and even the holder and the nut. There we go. Still get the fuse out. I think I'm gonna fill that up with dielectric grease. And then now we can take this off. One side on there and one side on there. That should be good to go. All right, I've got the new wire going from the switch all the way through this existing harness out there. And right under here, there are actually two connectors and those would allow you to disconnect all the wiring from the engine and the cab separately. But the main power wire, at one point it corroded off. It was this top one here. So they ran just a big wire in there. Looks like it does have a connector that it could be undone. But I currently, this green one here, I ran it just, just right straight through. I wanted less areas for corrosion. If I ever need to take it off, I'll just snip that wire in half and put a connector in it. But I ran it on the back side of this, just taped it to it, followed that harness all the way down. And then right here is our new wire. I went ahead and left the old one. Um, more than likely, there's something going on probably in the connector here and I don't see any issues leaving it because at the end of the day, what's it gonna hurt? I mean, if it stops working, I don't see it affecting this wire, the new one anyway. So, cause it's directly from here all the way to the switch. And then the switch has a small wire that jumps to the solenoid. So let's put the cab back down and give it a shot. All right, let's give it a shot. Got it all buttoned back up. Got the whole wiring harness retaped. Panels installed. There we go. Beautiful.
here's another issue I'm kind of worried about is either that's a really loose bushing or the arms aren't squeezed together enough. And it might be both. That was not a good idea. <laughs> I got it everywhere. <laughs> I'm just going to let it drain. That would probably be smart. This is a slide hammer and you can add all kinds of different attachments on the end of them and it allows you to screw it into something and then pull. This one just happens to be the perfect thread for that pin, so that's what we're going to use. Bingo!
Well, that's a lot cleaner, and since I'm gonna be putting my back on it a lot as I work up here, I didn't really wanna get covered in grease and stuff, so clean that up for now. And we're gonna take a look at this real quick. Yes, the one with the repair, it's right here, fun. Well, I'm glad I found that, yay. That one's been repaired, that one's on the outside. Uh, let's just get them out for now. Right here, this is the problem that caused this to break. So here's why I think that. You can tell this gap has been filled with weld, but they never got it over far enough to actually fill in and be properly um, back to where it was from the factory because right there, I don't know if you can see it, but right in there, there's a piece of metal that should technically be tucked under this piece of metal. And so whenever they fixed it, they just got it as close as they could to there. They didn't worry about getting it all the way in. And they just added a whole bunch of weld all the way through here. And all the way on the bottom. And then they added the crappiest weld in the world all the way around here. So when I bought this machine, I saw that crack. I saw that big crack, and over here, this one had started to crack. If we really actually look at this crack, the one that has broken, I almost believe maybe they added one little bead above the factory weld, but I think that this was pretty dang factory. So, what I think I'm going to do, we're going to grind all the weld out, I think this side will fit perfectly where it should go. I'll have to grind that chunk out. And then there's another little chunk in there. And then I might have to take this corner off. And then I think I'll take some of that out. But the goal here will be to get this side as factory as I can, get it tack welded maybe like a one inch weld one inch weld one inch weld and then and then we're going to completely cut this one off we're going to basically cut and grind out that weld grind all that out and the plan will be to get this as tight to that side as can be and hopefully we can grind out gently enough to be able to follow the factory edge like we can do with this one, because I can literally see the factory cut piece, you know, right down and around here on the inside, which is great. So I'm gonna basically start by getting the weld out of the way, 
Once I can do that, we'll shimmy this piece here where we need it, and then we'll we'll kind of get it lined up. But um, yeah, I knew this was coming, and here we are. So let's fix it right so it never has to be fixed again. A little more clamping pressure, but we are lining up really well. I was kind of worried because I know that side is pushing this side off, but I'm gonna get this as close as I can, line up every line I can, and then put some tacks, tack at the top, side, bottom, front, and then we're gonna cut the other side off and get the tension off of that and see what this does. But it's lining up really good. Really, really good. Yeah, so this piece here wasn't broken off. So when I run my hand down along this, I want this plate to be totally flush with that. And it's not yet quite, but we're getting really close. So I really ground in deep in this corner because it's where it was binding. And we'll fill it in with metal. Did you see that? The magnet on this took it out of my ear. Right? So I'm gonna still grind off all the paint and I'm probably gonna cut out and, and really V this out, but not now. <laughs> now, I'm gonna grind a nice place for a good tack weld, like right here. Got one on the front. Probably gonna do one up this area. And I know I want to do that because I really want to get this squared up straight solid enough that I can start working on the other side and then come back to this side if need be. But we can always grind more out once the clamps are out of the way.
All right, got a few tacks on there, a few on the front. The one on the bottom looks terrible. They all look terrible. I'm not a welder. I just weld. A couple small ones just to bridge that gap. That's where I cut out quite a bit of material to, because it was, a piece was underlapping, so it was basically pinching it, and it wasn't wanting to come over. And then a couple tacks here. Once I come back to this side, I'm gonna really grind this corner out, get those cracks filled in. I'm gonna really bridge that gap, basically fill it all in. For now, I just got it sitting there. So the goal is just to hold that where it is. That's why I did so much there. I didn't really V it out very far yet, but I want to get the other side cut off. I want to try and keep this side as square as I can. We'll cut that off. I believe it's going to come this way a slight bit. If you see the, the gap right here between this piece and the arm is about the gap I think is going to basically move over. The reason I think that is See this gap there? Right there is a big crack. And when it was new, obviously it would be that much over, which almost equates to the gap that we have in that corner there. So I think I'm gonna take an angle grinder and we're just gonna cut right through the weld. Still got it supported with the, with the lift. And then this might be free, all of this. Because I see a crack up here, there's a crack all the way down. So it's not a lot holding this. Probably just that. That grinder is a freaking beast. White, ready. And close. Yeah. Man, they just filled that in with stick weld. See more in there. I'm gonna have to grind this whole area off. This is gonna be the bigger of the two sides to do. A lot of grinding. I clean up this whole edge, get it down to bare metal, get past all that stick weld, V it out really well, and then we're gonna burn that baby in hardcore hot. Probably run an initial pass and then maybe three passes over it. One on each side and then burn one more down the middle. Yep, it's all just fill. 
all rusty, it's all porous. Absolutely no strength in that. There, that gives me a lot more access to the inside of this to get it cleaned up. Same with the edge around that cross member. Got all the old weld ground out, both off of the main arm and that cross member. Got all the junk out of there. There was a huge crack right here. So I really just kind of just dug in real far. We'll fill that all in with weld. And then one thing I left, this little curve right there is original metal that will meet up with this original metal. And there's enough little tiny pieces that I can tell fit into these tiny pieces that with this and this, as well as the height and the side, I should be able to get this very close to where it should have been originally when it was new. So again, what we're going to do is line it up, clamp the heck out of it, tack it, then bring it down and see how it looks. I can guarantee it will not break here, and it will not break here. I cannot guarantee it won't break anywhere else. All right, so I'm gonna really quickly wire brush, just wire, wire wheel these uh, welds. And one thing to note, if you ever go through a lot of these wire cups, they're expensive. They're, the good ones are like 20, 25 bucks a piece. And so to make them last, you want an angle grinder that has a speed adjustment. And when you go slower speeds with these, you don't move as much material, but you don't heat up these bristles as fast, which the heat and the friction combined is what makes these things start breaking off and throwing and getting ruined. So go with a grinder that's slower and these will last longer.
All right, I'm going to try and start it, and I'm hoping that if I just don't touch the controls for the bucket, I can move the arm up and down because I want to see how it how it lays against the machine. Guess we'll find out. Set you up right here, and you want to look, see if fluid comes out of right there. All right, so I definitely think we got it pretty dang good because the gap here where those hydraulic hoses sit is pretty consistent. All right, while we let that dry, let's get to the next issue. So this is the hydraulic oil level indicator. So you basically, you would look here and you see where your oil level is. Well, it's been leaking hydraulic fluid for a while. This is originally what was there, and it would have gone behind that metal plate here. Well, I cut a chunk of plexiglass and basically installed that there. 
and I don't think I used thick enough or strong enough plexiglass because it, it is still leaking. It leaks right here coming out of here and I can I can feel a little flex and probably when the hydraulic oil warms up it's causing an issue. I could not find this piece anywhere. So the plan will be to remake it with this. So that's probably quarter inch. So all we're gonna have to do is use this as a template to drill our holes and we'll cut it and we'll see how that works. Shoot, I thought the hydraulic fluid is already all leaked out of it, but we're leaking some, so let's get something to clean that. see this bubbled kind of almost went inwards and then there's a crack right here and it's right at the bottom so oil was getting right through the plastic right there I don't think it was getting past the seal anywhere that piece of plexiglass that I put in there I think it was just too thin I think that's probably 16th of an inch so we're gonna really step it up but I got to get this off the plate I got this clamp to a piece of sacrificial wood, so if we go through, we're not going to hit the bench. go perfect holes get this cut should be good to go There's one gasket. We'll make one more.
I'm trying to rough the surface up, but that's 320, 320 grit, and it's not doing enough. It's not scratching it enough. I probably should do it by hand with some rougher paper. All right, so last time I used a sealant. I probably used the wrong one. I used aviation sealant. And this time I'm not gonna use sealant. We're just gonna put a gasket on either side of this piece of plexiglass and see if that seals for us. I left this on here so that it wouldn't scratch up the window area, but we would get some scratches everywhere else to try and have something for it to bond to. So put a gasket that we made on either side and we'll see if that seals up properly. The other one, that's all it had. It had no sealant, the original one. Um, you know, I don't know. So I thought about using RTV. I don't know how well RTV adheres to, um, I don't know if this is technically acrylic or not, but it might be. That's why I roughed it up as well. off the tape. little overspray here and there, but this thing is by no means perfect. And really what I was going for with the black is just like an accent. I didn't want to have to try and match the faded yellow, so I figured I could tape this off and make it look black. And Plus I have other plans of painting this thing in the future, and it's not going to be yellow. You always got to watch out for death. It'll get you every time.
when I got this machine, there was no hold down for these hoses. They were just flapping in the wind, so I threw two big zip ties. Well, right here is a bolt hole that I had to weld back on, and I gotta figure out a way to clamp these hard lines to this arm so that they're not flopping around and rubbing. All right, here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna take some of this heater hose, we're gonna cut it down lengthwise. We're gonna run a piece about that long from here to here and then here to here just to protect the hard line. And then I will make a strap that will straddle both of these and I will put the bolt right through the middle. And then that strap will pull everything tight against the arm and then all that padding with the heater hose on this will keep it from flexing. I'm probably gonna add like here, I've got this small chunk, add a small chunk here, small chunk here, right in that area to kind of protect it. And we should be good. So maybe I'll add a little chunk right there and right there, but we'll see. Should do it. It's actually gonna work nice. It's nice and solid now. Only thing I'm kind of worried about is these hoses a little bit, but yeah, that's gonna be pretty dang solid compared to what it was, which was not solid at all. We'll know when we bring the arms down how much room we're gonna have here. Might be able to twist this swivel down some on both of these and get some more room. Now this cylinder does slightly lift up a little bit, so it might grab some of that as it's extending up, but we're gonna leave those alone for now. We're gonna get the rest of this tied down and tightened. I'm gonna bend this bracket just slightly. It's touching on the bottom, just not on the top, and I'd prefer if it was touching on both. So yeah, I think that's gonna be good.
far so good. The arms move perfectly. The gap right here behind this arm where the hydraulic hoses are is exactly the same all the way across. The hoses are not touching anywhere they shouldn't be or anywhere we didn't protect them. Um, I was just going through the motions trying to get these cylinders all bled, get all the air out of the lines. But we got to add more hydraulic fluid because it is low. I think we got it done. Got it whipped. So let's get some fluid in there. Put the bucket on. See what it does. Yeah, that grease cert there is broken. So I gotta get a new one for that. And I gotta get an extension for this. This one won't take grease over there. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's called a grease joint rejuvenator made by IPA. And what you do, you take this end, you fill it with a thin oil. This is PB Blaster. And then you take the other end, and you insert it, and then you put this on the grease cert that won't take grease. is basically hammer on this and it puts pressure down in through that grease jerk and cleans it out. Bingo. There's the grease we want to see. That gets us to about right in the middle of the safe level. I'm going to add more later, but I want to cycle the system and then we'll top it off again later. But right now we know we got enough to run it safely. And now there's enough in it to tell if uh, this will work. I'm pretty sure the thicker glass will work, but I'm kind of wondering, I'm hoping those two gaskets I made seal. We'll find out. If it doesn't, I'll find another way to fix it. All right, here's one of the big things I wanted to see is how even that bucket is when it touches. And it's looking really good. This bucket right in the middle, it's slightly bowed down, but I really think we got it, got it right on. Oh yeah. You can see the bow if you really look right in the middle but there's about a half inch above the ground on that side, a half inch above the ground on that side, and the whole middle's touching. So 
What I really need to do is get my other bucket and see how that sits on the ground. But we're looking really good. I'm, I'm more than happy. It's gonna function properly and do exactly what I need it to do. All right, well, there you have it. We got the bucket back on. You can see the gap along the floor is almost identical. One problem I did realize and recognize now is the pins and bushings right in this bar right there, there's a gap. And so I really need to replace both pins and bushings at some point. I'm gonna get those soon. These two pins for these cylinders had a little bit of uh, uh, wear in them. These two seem to be fine, but all in all for an old beat up machine, I think it's looking great now. The arms are lined up, the, I mean, there's, it's not perfect, but I wasn't aiming for perfect, I was aiming for functional and getting it as good as I can. And so we got all four new hydraulic lines there. The hydraulic lines are captured and not bouncing all over the place. We've got no leak so far on the hydraulic reservoir there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Lots more to do on this little old beast, but it sure has been a useful machine so far. And I'm just gonna do things as I get around to them. I'm gonna keep using the machine. As always with these old beasts, there's always more that needs to be done. Needs a new seat, need to get, um, there's a little leak in these auxiliary hydraulic fittings. There's the fuel gauge doesn't work. This cylinder leaks. I believe these two might leak a little bit. They need to be rebuilt. So that means if I'm doing those three, I might as well do this one, even though it's not leaking. Um, I need to do a full service on it. I have changed the oil, but I need to do the oil. All the filters, fuel filter, hydraulic filter. And then at some point, I want to do stuff like adding some nice lights. The seat is all cattywampus in there because the floor is all rotted out from all the years of uh, sitting outside. So I might do something with the inside, make it look a little nicer. Um, I don't know. All in all, it's a good machine. It's a good tractor to have around. I'm more than happy to, to put some TLC in and, and keep this thing operational. But I'm glad to have that bucket fixed and that arm, because that was one of the things when I bought it, I knew it was going to happen. And I was just waiting for it to break. And finally it broke. So now it's solid as it's ever going to be.
Well, I appreciate you guys sticking around in this build on this little old machine. I've got lots of other machines to come, such as that one right there and that one right there and quite a few others. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, stick around, subscribe, hit the bell notification and definitely leave me comments because I love hearing from you. So you guys have a great one and I'll catch you guys on the next one.